If you believe God is here, the Savior is here, yeah. the healer is here, yeah. the deliverer is here, yeah. and the one that brought your divine solution from heaven is here, I say praise the Lord. Yeah. What a great service we have today, a great service of divine solution. God is here. God is there with you there and the Lord is going to bless you abundantly today in Jesus name amen. let that amen wake up amen. father we thank you for today and we bless your name for this service Lord we pray there will be total restoration total transformation and complete recovery and total divine solution today for everyone in Jesus' name. Amen. Touch every life. Transform every life. Do something new in every life today in Jesus' name. Amen. We thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. God is here. Ah, you missed that. Amen. I said God is here. Amen in your life. Amen in your family. Amen in this whole arena today. In Jesus' name. For you are connected online. God is there. And the Lord is going to bless everyone without limit even today in jesus name i want to appreciate your staying in the sun i wish i could come and stay there with you and all your sacrifice and your staying there heaven will open upon you and you will know that god is there present with you in jesus name you are blessed i am blessed God bless you. You can sit down. We're coming to something special today in our service. And I'm reading from Luke chapter 15, verse 18. Luke chapter 18, chapter 15, verse 18. I will arise and go to my father and say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, look at verse 20 there. In verse 20 it says, And he arose and came to his father. He arose and came to his father. I'm talking to you about the son of a father. A loving father, a compassionate father, and a merciful father. And a rich father as well. He had two sons. And in the Jewish tradition, when the father dies, he will divide his property into a number of parts. The firstborn will have two shares, and then the others will have their shares. And because there are two sons, the first son will receive two shares, and the last will receive, the second will receive just one share. But that happened at the death of the father surprisingly this younger son came and said i don't want to wait till you are dead i want it now the father must have pleaded with him let's do it the normal way let's share it the normal way he said no i must have my way he had this way and the father gave him his portion and he wasn't going to stay home he left and went to a far country and there with money, with riches, something he didn't labor for, and he just got it like that. He had friends, fair weather friends, and all those friends helped him to finish everything. And then there was a famine in the land. He came to one, and everything he had enjoyed at home was the father. He lost everything, and now he's in a far country. And normally, the Jewish people don't eat pigs. 
but if uh, he will not uh, find any work he had to go to the place where the fee the pigs were being fed and eventually he got a job there he couldn't eat pigs but what the pigs were eating he even wanted to eat that and the master of the of the pigs will not even give him that and then he woke up he arose and he said why why am i here the son of a rich father a loving father a compassionate father that i could have had enough and to spare that's why he said i'm going to return i'm telling you today as to return fully all your heart all your soul all your mind you return to the lord abundance is coming back for you healing coming back for you deliverance coming back for you and that amen is like you know somebody is just waking up sunday afternoon amen open air amen divine solution amen prosperity amen healing amen it's coming to you I rejoice with you. You are going to get abundance today in Jesus' name. And he said, I will arise. I will go back. I forget shame. I forget all the guilt that I have. I forget the condemnation. He was going back in Tatars. He was going back poor. But he said, I will. I will. That's what you need in your life. That you decide and you determine i will go go back to the father now there is intention and what is said i will go back that's intention action must add to that intention intention alone without action without performance will just be a good idea flowing in your head and it doesn't come to reality and now we're told in verse 20 he arose and he came to his father you'll arise today somebody there i said you arise today i will arise intention and then the action he arose and he came i'm talking to you today on our proper return for divine solution divine solution is available but we have to return in a proper way and there are seven things i'm sharing with you number one your personal return to the savior let's take that beach your personal return to the savior we're told in isaiah chapter 55 Isaiah chapter 55, I'm reading here from verse 6. It says, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. It said, If you're going to return, a father is waiting for you. The Lord is waiting for you. The Savior is waiting for you. And at this time, people are being blessed here at Papal Ground. People are being blessed all over this nation, Nigeria. People are being blessed all over, everywhere. If you're going to come, this is the time to come. If you want salvation, this is the time to come. If you want healing, this is the time to come. And then it's a personal return to the Savior. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found call you upon him while he is near he is near you right there where two or three are gathered in my name there i am in the midst of them the lord is there by your side your healer is there your savior is there your deliverer is there and it says call ye upon him while it's near look at verse 7 in verse 7 it says let the wicked forsake his way that's a man prodigal son had to forsake the pigs had to forsake that far country had to forsake all the fair weather friends and he came he came alone he came not with the ideas and all the practices of the far country of the strangers and so let the wicked forsake his way and the righteous man is thus and let him 
him return that's the word let him return my brother there let him return my sister there let him return my son my daughter there return return let him return and then it says it's returning unto the lord and it will have mercy upon him and to our god for he will abundantly pardon and as we return today personal return to the savior mercy will come for you backslider mercy will come for you and anyone you are, you're suffering, you're sorrowful, and you're down, down there in the ditch, in the trench, mercy has come. The big hand of the Lord will pull you up even today in Jesus' name. Look at Proverbs chapter 28, the way you come. The attitude you must have when you come, it says, He that covereth a sin shall not prosper. You know, the boy did not come back and say, eh, Daddy, I'm back. You know, I went because actually you are not a good father. You discipline me. You always correct me. And it, the man did not say that. He came and he said, I have a sin. I am the sinner. I am the evil doer. I am the falling one. He said, I have sinned. He did not cover his sin. He that covers the things shall not prosper. But whoso confesseth and forsaketh them, that's all God is looking for. All the past he'll forgive. All the past he'll forget. Because he is a loving, merciful, gracious father. And he says, whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. I come to declare to you the declaration of heaven that you are going to have mercy today. The love of God is going to flow into your life today in Jesus' name. And whatever bad thing, whatever evil thing you experience while you are in the far country, come on home, come on home. Mercy, love, compassion, salvation, forgiveness, healing, deliverance, abundance, provision is waiting for you. It is yours in Jesus' name. I'm looking at number two here. Number two, number two is our penitent return with supplication. Our penitent return with supplication. You know, it's not a proud return that I come and you lucky I came back. When I was away, you had only one son. I could have died. And you'll be led with only one son. But I just pitied you. And I considered you. Now I am back. My old room. Give me the key. And all the servants that were under my authority. Give them to me now. I'm back. I've returned. He didn't come with pride. He came with penitence. And as we come. And we come with surrender like that. And then with supplication, number two, our penitent return with supplication. I'm looking at Ezekiel chapter 18, and I'm reading from Bastachi. Ezekiel chapter 18, Bastachi, actually from the middle, it says, repent and turn. Repent and turn yourselves from your transgression, so iniquity shall not be your ruin. Iniquity shall not be your ruin. Any amen over there? Yeah. What does that mean? Iniquity shall not be your ruin. Look at that prodigal son. He had iniquity. He had sin. He had transgression. And all those iniquities, normally, the soul that sinneth, it shall die. But all that past iniquity, will not ruin him, will not affect his future, will not affect his immediate future, 
will not affect his earthly future, will not affect his eternal future. The iniquity that he had, that he did, everything he spoke wrong, everything he did wrong, everything he acted wrong, all the associations that were wrong, that iniquity will not ruin him. That's what the Lord is saying, that normally, you're a criminal. Normally, you're a sinner. Normally, you're a lawbreaker. And because of the commandment of God and the decision of God, you normally should be ruined by your iniquity or your passing. And the Lord, he will have the right to cast you in the lake of fire. But the Lord said, you know, I so love you. I've given my only begotten son that you, he was thinking about you when he was sending Christ on earth. You are not thinking like that. You are saying, I'm not a Christian. My religion is not Christian. My family is not Christian. And God was looking at you, but you can't do without me. And all the same, whatever you have said wrong, whatever you have done wrong, that iniquity will not ruin you. I said that iniquity will not ruin you. It will not ruin your prospect on earth. It will not ruin your desires. It will not ruin your future. And then the eternal future, that iniquity will not ruin you in Jesus' name. What's the solution to that? What's the answer to that? Repent. Change your mind. Turn around. All that desire, I want to leave the church. I want to leave the Bible. I want to leave the home. I want to leave all the control of pastors. I want to leave my father. Change your mind. I'll come back to the father. All the things I thought of before, it landed me in trouble. I am back. Somebody there, I said, I am back. And then as you come back, God will forgive you. I said, God will forgive you. It will set you free. And the latter of the devil against your life saying, I got him, I kill him, I'll destroy him. It will never be able to breathe on this land of living. The Lord will make Satan sorrowful about you. He'll put his finger of regret in his mouth. And I know now, I will have killed him before he changed his mind. Satan, is, it is too late now. This friend, that daughter, that son is returning today. And the mercy of God will come upon your life in Jesus' name. Return. Return and iniquity will not be your ruin. Look at verse 31. In verse 31, it tells us, Cast away from you all your transgressions, whereby ye have transgressed, and make you a new heart and a new spirit. For why will ye die? Look at God. Asking his people, if you go back to Egypt, well, you will die in slavery. If you go back to crime, you will die in sickness and calamity. Why will you die? Why will you die? Your father is the God of all life. Your savior Jesus is the prince of life. And the spirit of God is the spirit of life. And the word of God is the word of life. Everything surrounding you, everything calling you, you is calling you to life. Why will you die, O house of Israel? Verse 32 says, I have no pleasure in the death of him that dieth. Only Satan has pleasure in the death of him who dies. And when somebody dies without salvation, dies without repentance, dies without the mercy of God, dies without the grace of God, Satan will be laughing. I got that one. He will spend eternity with me in the lake of fire. But God is different as you are there today, no matter who you are, no matter where you're coming from, no matter your past religion, no matter your failure, no matter how bad you have been, God says, 
I love you still. I don't have any pleasure in the death of anyone that dies. Therefore, turn yourselves and leave you. I will leave. You will leave. Just turn, just turn. You're going this direction. Now you turn and you're going the direction of life. And life will come to you in Jesus' name. I come to number three now. Number three is the purposeful return though in sickness. Purposeful return though in sickness. Look at that prodigal man. He was not eating balanced diet. No fruit. No vegetables, no clean water, and no good drink. And he was not sleeping well. He had stress. He had depression. He had anxiety. He had pressure. He had all those things weighing him down. And he was thinking, what will I do now? Why have I done this? And all that, first of all, the sickness of the mind. First of all, the sickness of the soul. First of all, the sickness of the present pressure in his life. And then all that stress and all that dehydration, lack of clean water to drink, and all that depression, and all that mind that is weighed down, everything will come up in the body eventually. The body will be sick. And even though it was not in the highest of excitement, it was not in the highest of uh, personality, he said, I know how everything will change. And I know, I know, and I can tell you, your sickness will vanish away. I know it. Your depression will vanish away. I know it. All the stress of your life, everything will vanish away. I know it. The sleeplessness, everything will vanish away. I know it. You eat now, and five minutes later, you are still hungry as if you have never eaten today. I know it. But then, praise the Lord, glory to God, everything is going to change. I said, everything will change. Number three now, our purpose for return, though in sickness. Look at Hosea, chapter 6. I'm reading from verse 1. Come, let us return. You're sick? Come, let us return. You're depressed? Come, let us return. You have incurable disease? Come, and let us return. And it looks like life is upside down. Why am I like this? And why is it? Is it my stars? Is it my genes? Is it my family? Is it my surrounding? What is this? Come, let us return unto the Lord, for he has turned and he will heal us. Where are you? I want to see your hand up. He will heal you. Where are you? He will heal you. He has torn us. What does, that, what does that mean? What it means is this. God said the law of sowing and reaping. He said if anybody jumps down from the staircase on the concrete ground, he said the law, the law of gravity. Else much he said, it will break. He said, it will die. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. If he goes away from my presence and he goes into the territory of the devil, then he will lose my protection and the devil will crush him. That's the law. That's why it says he has torn us. Actually, it is not that God does any evil directly and tears us directly. It's the law he has said. The law of gravity. And the law of sowing and reaping, that if anyone sows something bad to the flesh, he will reap the destruction of the flesh. But now, if he returns, let us go, let us return unto the Lord, and he will heal us. Any healing for somebody there today? He will. I said he will. Whatever it is in the stomach, in the head, in the heart, whatever it is, everything will vanish away in Jesus' name. It will heal us 
and he has smitten. He has smitten. Again, understand, he smote Christ for us. And because Christ is smitten for us, will not be smitten again if we accept that he was bruised for iniquity. He was smitten for our sin. And then it says, as we come to him, the chastisement of our peace is upon him. And with his stripes, tell me, we're killed. Now, if somebody sees that a tree is being caught, and the tree will fall down in this direction, and then he counts this as boldness, he counts it as courage, and he signs there the law that God has said is that if something heavy comes on something fragile, the heavy thing that is falling will not be destroyed, the fragile thing will be destroyed. That's the law. When a heavy yoke, a heavy body, a heavy tree falls on a fragile substance, that fragile substance will die, will, will be crushed. That's the law. And because God has set the law, and somebody then says, I don't believe that law. I don't accept that law. And you see the tree falling, and his life is fragile. And the bones are fragile. And everything about him is fragile. And that tree falling is heavy and falls upon him by the Lord that has been said. That that fellow did not run away from there to hide in Christ. Who has been smitten for us, he'll be smitten. But if you realize that, I have been counting it as boldness. I see car coming, and I will stand there, and I say, they will stop for me. I see tree falling, and then I say, I'm special. I'm going to stand here, and the tree will stop for me. And the calamity, heavy things of the devil of earth is coming, and then I stand there, when you change your mind, when you repent, when you say, how was I foolish like that? How was I hardened like that? How was I heady like that? I come out of the way. The Lord will smile at you. The laughter of heaven will come upon your life. And he will bind us up. He will heal you. It will bind you up. And everything will be all right in your life. In Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to number four now. As we come to number four, we're talking about the preventable return of the Spirit. Preventable return of the Spirit. I'm reading to you from Luke chapter 11. And in Luke chapter 11, I'm reading from verse 24. Luke chapter 11, we're looking at verse 24. Then the unclean spirit, when the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, and he walketh through dry places, seeking rest and finding none. He says, I will return to my house whence I came out. That's uh, the Jesus that revealed this great revelation unto us. Look at this. It said the unclean spirit, the evil spirit, and the spirit of darkness. God did not create a house habitation for them here on earth. They just roam about because their final habitation is the bottomless pit, is the lake of fire. And then the people who did not know that, they present themselves as accommodation, free accommodation and free habitation for an evil spirit. And then the power of God comes to you as it's going to come to you today. I said it will come to you today. That evil spirit that normally will turn your head and there you say, I'm going to kill another person. Even though you discover, you know that if you are discovered, you'll go to jail or you might be killed. Or you say, I'm going to fight. I'm going to do some dangerous things. 
is the evil spirit that is entering and then as you come here thank god you're delivered i said thank god you're set free you know even those unclean spirits cannot hear the amen you are saying the lord will set you free and then when that unclean spirit is gone out of it man is coming out L uh, lunatics you are going to be healed insanity is going to be healed and that evil temper that is caused by evil spirit you are going to be healed in jesus name and that evil spirit that is always making you, you are about to get to the place of your success. And then you pull back every time you try. Then when you're about to get there, you come back. That evil spirit will be cast out in Jesus' name. But understand, understand, evil spirit does not have accommodation, habitation provided by God. And so he walketh through the places, dry places, seeking rest and finding none. And then he says, I will return unto my house whence I came out. After this crusade, evil spirit cast out and evil thing, bad things all cast out. If you don't substitute, if you don't replace all the vacancy that the evil spirit, evil thought, evil plan, evil action, evil lifestyle, all the places they occupied, if you don't make Jesus to fill that place, and then uh, the evil spirit is saying, uh, I will return, he will not return to me. He will not return to me. There is preventable return of the spirit something you can do and block the way and lock your door that you prevent re the return of that evil spirit coming upon your life in jesus name look at verse 25 in verse 25 and when he cometh he findeth his sweat and garnished empty and then in verse 26 it says then goeth he and taketh him seven other spirits did you no accommodation did you no habitation did you no resting place and this evil spirit said come I got a resting place where I was before, but I was alone there. And therefore, the power of Christ came and drove me out. I've discovered the place is empty. Come, come, come and join me. And then they joined him. Hold on. Evil spirit, seeing a place empty and seeing I can have accommodation here, when to call seven other evil spirits now if you know that there's salvation here and you rejoice there's salvation here you know there's healing here you rejoice there's healing here you know there's prosperity here and you know there's divine solution here and it's coming your way and then uh, you know two other people three other people seven other people they're on the contacts in your phone uh, and you can just punch this and that and tell them to come uh, i find something here there's miracle here there's signs and wonders here there's prosperity here there is a breakthrough here you call them and when they come as the lord has saved you he will save them and the Lord has healed you, it will heal them. But if you don't, then you are worse than this evil spirit. The evil spirit said, come, and then they came, and they dwelt therein. And the last stage of that man is worse than the first. Because the man did not prevent the evil spirit returning. Number three, the preventable return of the spirit. Evil spirit will not return to me. Say it for yourself. I can't hear you. Let heaven hear you. Let Jesus affirm that in your life calamity will not return affliction will not return 
but things will not return the preventable return of the spirit number five number five here is talking about the permanent return to the sanctifier permanent return to the sanctifier remember i'm talking about this prodigal son and this prodigal son had something in him it's the tendency of any little thing that happens i'm going i'm leaving is the propensity any any little discomfort i'm going i'm packing up i'm not going to stay here again it's the nature of everyone that wants to move because it appears the field is greener outside there's the depravity in man there's the propensity in man there's the nature in man and it's in the woman too uh, the woman is married and then any little challenge not every woman i'm talking about those who have this propensity and this desire any little thing any little argument any little misunderstanding i'm going i'm going i'm going but this prodigal son he came back and the story tells us he came and then he confessed to the father father i've sinned against heaven and against you i'm not worthy to be your servant your son make me as one of your hired servant and the father embraced him accepted him and then we never hear again I want to leave. I want to leave. That propensity and that thing inside the heart, that depravity, the Lord had taken it away. We call that sanctification. And it is the sanctifier that does that in us. I come, I stay. I come, I abide. I come, I continue. And there's no desire for the dregs of the pigs, for the husks of the pigs, and for the lifestyle in the far country anymore, I am abiding because that depravity within is taken away. He will do it for you. I said they will do it for you. I'm looking at, I'm looking at Deuteronomy chapter 30. Look at verse 2 here. Deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 2 and shall return unto the lord thy god shall return unto the lord thy god when you return what will he do look at verse six in verse six return 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 and then in verse six it says and the lord thy god you return to the lord thy god and then the lord thy god will circumcise thine heart and the heart of thy seed to love the lord with all thine heart and with all that with all thy heart with all thy soul that thou mayest live you will live i said you will live and all the you know propensity and the leaning and the you know desire i'm leaving i'm going i will not stay the lord will so sanctify you you will love the lord your god with all your heart all your soul all your mind and the depravity of wanting to live i will live no more i am here i am here I can't hear you. I am here. I am here. You are there and the blessing of God will keep on flowing and flowing into your life in Jesus name. I'm coming now to number six. Number six is the promised return of the sovereign. The promised return of the sovereign the sovereign uh, that is sovereignty is the almighty one is the most high and he said anytime you get into a crossroad i'll find you there i'll meet you there i'll take care of you there i will return and now while the crusade is going on every time you come he'll return back to you i didn't hear your amen and then after we finish and you go back home you'll be a favorite of god any cheer that is about to come the almighty will return to you 
it will wipe away that tear. Any calamity that is about to come, the Lord will return unto you. He'll ward calamity out of your life in Jesus' name. Look at Genesis, Genesis chapter 18, and I'm reading from verse 14. Genesis chapter 18, reading from verse 14. Is anything too hard for the Lord? Is waiting for your answer? Anything in your life? Anything on your wife? Anything on your husband? Anything on your children? Anything in our church? Anything in our country? Anything in any nation? Is anything too hard for the Lord? The time at the time appointed, I will return unto thee. He will not be late in your life. At the time appointed, I will return unto thee according to the time of life. And Sarah, thy wife, shall have a son. Looks like not many people are married here. And Sarah, thy wife, shall have a son. And your family will have the success. Yeah. And everything ordained for you by God will be fulfilled in Jesus' name. Yeah. Numbers chapter 23. I'm reading from verse 19. Numbers chapter 23, verse 19. God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. As he said, and shall he not do it? As he spoken, and shall he not make it good? He has said something good will happen to you, he will do it. He has said your miracle has come, divine solution has come for you, he will do it in Jesus' name. He cannot lie, he will not change the promise, he will give it unto you. I have it. I have mine. The promised return of the sovereign. Number seven now. Number seven is the prophesied return of the son. The prophesied return of the son. The Lord is telling us something. He says, come to me. And then in this life, I'll give you abundant life. The thief cometh not but to, to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life. You have life. And life more abundant. The more abundant life has come for you today in Jesus' name. He says, seek it for the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things while you're on earth, what to eat, what to wear, the work to do, the shelter, the house, and all the provision, everything, all things shall be added unto you in Jesus' name. Yeah. While you are here on earth, he says that I give you my name. And whatsoever you will ask, I will give Unto you it will happen in Jesus' name. But then the Lord is telling us, He said, While I bless you on earth, while I prosper you on earth, while I heal you on earth, while I deliver you on earth, earth is limited. 70 years, 80 years, 100 years, 120 years, it comes to an end. And there is still eternity. I will come back for you. I will return. The promised return. The prophesied return of the son. And he says, as I blessed you here on earth, then I will return and take you to that place of eternal rest, eternal beauty, eternal bliss to eternal paradise and all your life satan will be in hell all his angels will be in hell and all the other people that followed satan will be in hell and then as the west is far from the east 
as the sky is far from the earth, so is heaven far from hell. The Lord will take you so far away from hell, you'll not even smell the odor of hell. You will be in heaven. I will be in heaven. I can't hear the people. The prophesied return of the son. The son is coming back. His name is Jesus. Look at John chapter 14. John chapter 14 verse 1. In John chapter 14, reading here from verse 1. Let not your heart be troubled. Any trouble here today? Maybe because you are sitting over there in the far country. Now make up your mind. I will return. I will go to my father. And then as you are coming back to the father, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God. Believe also in me. But still, it says, in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare to prepare a place for you. I didn't know that my name is in the Bible. My name is there. That's you there. That's me. I said, that's me. I will go and prepare a place for for you. He's going to prepare a place for you. And then he's going to return. Look at verse 3. And if I go, he went and prepare a place for you, I will come again. It's, it's returning. I said it's returning. I receive you unto myself. I'm happy here. I'm going to be happy over there. I'm blessed here. I'm going to be blessed over there. I'm provided for here. He's going to provide for me here. He gives me accommodation here on earth. He's going to give me mansion there in heaven because he's going to return as he prophesied. And he said, so that I receive you to myself that where I am there, ye may be also. Where are you? I'll be there. I said I'll be there. I said I'll be there. He saves you on earth and he saves you for heaven. He blesses you on earth and he's going to take you to a blessed heaven. He separates you on earth that you'll have the best of blessings you can find on earth. On earth. And then in heaven he said, you're joyful now. When you get there, your joy will be full. You have rest now. When you get over there, your rest will be unceasing. It says everything is available for you here now. If you know my name, but the best is yet to come. He will return. I said he will return. And when he returns, he'll take you from this dusty earth. He'll take you to the golden heaven. Are you there? Where are you? Where are you? It's bowed and eyes closed. The Lord wants to give you right now that privilege. You know you'll be, you've wandered away. And you know you have gone away to the far country. And you live as if God is not your father. You didn't have any connection with the father. Any connection with God. But now in the far country you see how you are suffering. And the Lord is waiting for you. If you will say today... I will return. I will return. I will return. I will arise and go to my father. I will say to my father, I have sinned. I'm not worthy to be called a child of God, a child of the kingdom, but the mercy of God is waiting for me. Lord, I return. Where are you? Raise up your hand. You've wandered away to the far country. You've wandered away in sin. You've wandered away in iniquity. And you're making up your mind as the Lord is stretching out his hand and is saying, I will welcome you. Raise up that hand. Raise up that hand. Glorious day for you. Glorious day for you. If you're raising up your hand, please stand up right there. 
God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. Yes, yes, stand up right there and say, Lord, I am the one. I wandered away. I am the one. I've been in the wilderness of sin. I come, I come, I come. Where are you? What, where are you? On my right hand side in front of me and then at the left over there. This is a blessed moment in your life. Lord, I come. Raise up that hand and stand up and then as we are standing up, tell the Lord, I will not go back again to the wilderness. I will not go back again to Egypt. I will not go back again to that far country. I will not go back again to those evil spirits. Lord, I come and I come to stay. Keep on standing. I'm praying for you now. It's a special prayer. Keep on standing. I'm praying for you now. It's a special prayer. That propensity to go back into evil is going to be taken away from your life. And that tendency is going to be taken away. Where are you? Stand up. Don't miss your prayer. This is specially tailored for you. You raise up your hand and then you stand up. You say, Lord, I am here. I come to Jesus. I repent. I repent. I turn from my sin. And the Lord has seen you. And the compassion of the Lord will receive you. The love of God will receive you. There will be joy in heaven. Because you have returned to the Lord. I'm praying for you now. Father, in the name of Jesus. We thank you for these who have returned unto the Lord. They return from their sin. They return from their backsliding. They return from their transgression. Oh Lord, forgive them in Jesus' name. Let me hear your amen. Lord, I pray your salvation will come to everyone in Jesus' name. Restoration to the Father's kingdom will come to everyone. Confirm it, Lord, in every life. In Jesus' name, I pray. Yeah. And the church said, yeah. it kept on standing. Our counselors are there very briefly, and they will attend to you. And then I'll come back. I'll pray for you. Everything you have lost, you are going to regain everything today. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. A bigger amen. amen. Loud the louder amen. amen. All who have indicated returning, you are giving your life over to the Lord. Please collect the sleep from our counselors around you. Fill in the sleep and return the sleep to them. All the counselors, ushers that are involved in counseling, please get into action quickly. In your various sectors, let's hand them over. Let's have the, uh, the slips over to them to fill and return. Get in touch with the counselees. We want to be of more help to all of you that have decided for Christ today. We want to be in touch with you. Please give us your name and other details on how we can contact you. And if you are online, please fill the form online. Get connected through the links that have been provided and fill the forms and submit so that our brethren nearest to you can be in touch with you through the various contact means. Then we'll be able to be of more help to you. Let's do that quickly. And why that is being done? All of us present here, all of us present in our various congregations. And all who are connected online, your private homes and other places, please be in the mood of prayer. Keep on communing with heaven. And the blessing of God will be coming upon you. Very soon, the man of God will be coming to pray special divine solution prayer for everybody. Don't go yet. Wherever you are, don't leave the link and the connection remain connected if you're online stay connected and be expectant just keep on praying keep on praying and keep on expecting and your desire will be granted you will receive your miracle you will get the fullness of the blessing of the lord in jesus name counsel us let's be fast
Counselors, let's quickly attend to all the brethren that have stood up, that are standing up, that want to receive the blessing that have been prophesied through the ministration of the word of God. Get in touch quickly, attend to them, and uh, as you are collecting the slips, please check up to be sure all the needed details have been provided. The supervisors in the various sectors, let's uh, direct the counselors to other places if you finish your section. If you have finished your section, please look around to your right, to your left, join other sectors and assist. Don't return until we are all through in all the sectors. Look around and join the other sectors so we can all finish within a good time. Let's keep on praying online, in all other locations, and here, let's keep on praying, and keep on expecting, keep on believing the miracle of God, the power of God, the divine solution of God will be yours. God's own solution, divine solution will be yours. Just keep on praying. Whatsoever may be the challenge, the mountain, the problems, God has a solution for you this morning. You will receive your solution this morning. Believe. Pray. Believe. Believe. Pray. Pray. Believe. Miracle on your way. Counselors, let's be fast. Look around before you return. Look around, left, right. See those who are still standing and attend to them. If you have Fill your form. Please return to the counselors and take your seat. If you are done with, your, uh, with the filling of your form, please return the form to the counselors and take your seat. Counselors, please look around. If you are still with your sleep, please raise them up. Raise them up so that the counselors can collect. If you are still with your sleep, please raise them up. Counselors, look around. Collect them quickly, hand them over to the supervisors. It's miracle time. Divine solution time. Get ready. Get ready. The Lord is going to touch you. If you're online, remain connected. Let's all rise up on our feet. Rise up on your feet. The man of God is here to minister unto you. Believe you'll receive. You're welcome, sir. Praise God. Everybody, you know you are getting something now. Praise the Lord. I have returned. I have returned. When that boy returned from the far country, and you know, everything he wanted to say, he started saying it, but the father embraced him. He didn't have to cry, shed tears, roll on the ground. He didn't have to say and confess everything he did day after day and week after week after he left. The fact that he had returned solved all the problem. And the fact that you have returned has solved all your problem. Yeah. And so the father said, get the best dress and the best, uh, you know, a fatted calf and let us all rejoice. Heaven is rejoicing because of you. Healing has come. Deliverance has come. Provision has come. Success has come. Your tears are wiped away. Everyone, everyone, everyone without exception is coming your way right now. Raise up that hand. Miracle is coming your way. Deliverance coming your way. Restoration coming your way. Prosperity coming your way. Success coming your way. The joy of the Lord coming your way. And your family is going to be blessed abundantly. Father, in Jesus' name. I thank you because... You are a great God with a big heart, with a loving heart, and with an accepting heart. And you accept everyone, and you never push anyone away. I pray the assurance of acceptance will come to everyone in Jesus' name.
all the mistakes of the past, all the faults of the past, all the sins of the past, let there be assurance in every heart they are forgiven in Jesus' name. Now, when you created Adam and Eve, there's no sickness, there's no disease, but then man ran away from that perfect health. Now we return to that perfect health. Any sickness there, any infirmity there, any work of the devil there, any affliction there, come out in Jesus' name. I pray healing for everyone. Deliverance for everyone. Miracle for everyone. Signs and wonders for everyone. In Jesus' name. Sound health. Perfect health. Grant unto everyone. Lord, cancel failure out of every life. Success. Success. Prosperity. Goodness. Shower upon everyone. In Jesus' name. And those blessings you're seeking for, and those desires you have in your heart now, let there be a performance in your life. Fulfillment in your life. Heavenly Father, I pray that no one here, brother, sister, man, woman, boy, girl, will, meet, will miss the desired miracle. Let it come upon everyone. Confirm it, Lord. Affirm it, Lord. Put testimony in every mouth. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. It is done. Put your hands together for Jesus. It is done.